Today, we're going to talk about business planning. We're going to talk about five kinds of business plans and two tools that are really important in creating most of those business plans. These are things that every dealer, every company, every business should have, and yet way too many don't have one. We've all heard the old adage that failure to plan is planning to fail. And I believe that there's a lot of truth in that. First type of plan that I'm going to talk about is a disaster plan. And I put that at the top of the list because that is the one that has the potential to do the most damage to your company if you don't have one. And in that video, I'm going to share with you a story of a company that I do business with and they had a, a very unexpected event happen and it turned into a real disaster for their company. Using their story, I'm going to illustrate several pieces of a disaster plan that this company didn't have that they needed and the impact on customers and their business. After we talk about disaster planning, the next video in this series is going to talk about two types of analysis. The first one is a pest analysis. And I'm not talking about calling the orchid man and having him come in and do some extermination. A pest analysis is really examining the environment that your business is going to have to operate in. Looking at the political environment, the economic environment, the social environment, and the technological environment. And as, as things change in those four environments, some of those changes may impact your business. So it's important that you're looking at, at where you operate now, but what those environments hold for your business in the future. The second analysis we're going to talk about is a SWOT analysis. And now when I say SWOT analysis, I'm not talking about the, the policeman with the, the sniper rifles trying to, to rescue hostages. I'm talking about an analysis of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for your business. Because before you can make plans for the future, you need to think about what might affect you. So the SWOT analysis, when we combine it with the PEST analysis, those two analyses start to give you a really good picture of what the future might hold. Is it gonna be perfect? Absolutely not. None of us have crystal balls where we know what's going to happen. But by thinking about the most likely changes and doing some research about what are the most likely changes to occur in your environment, those will help you to create plans that will let your company not only survive, but thrive. Once we have a pest analysis and a SWOT analysis in place, then we're ready to start working on business plans. And I'm going to suggest that where you start is a five-year plan. A lot of times in business, a cycle of accomplishing things may take more than one year. So I recommend that you plan out five years. You've done your analysis, so you can make your best guess what the environment looks like five years from now. So the next question is, is what do you want your business to look like in five years? Where do you want to be? We'll talk a little bit about uh, what Stephen Covey uh, mentioned in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and that is to start with the end in mind. Because once you know where you want to be, then you can start to figure out how to get there. And it's kind of like you think of about if you're going to travel somewhere, you pick a destination, and once you have the destination in mind, you can then start to, to try to figure out how you're going to get from where you are to the destination. Until you know the destination, there's no way to plan because you don't know which way to go. Once you have your five-year plan in place, then the, the rest of the pieces start to come together fairly easily because the next piece of it is a one-year plan. So we know where we want to be in five years. Where do we need to be at the end of this year to get where we want to be in five years? And this plan starts to become much more uh, detailed. We can think of it as much more of an operational plan rather than a strategic plan. So what are we going to do this year? What are we going to try to accomplish 
to get us in the direction that we want to go. Once we know where we want to go, and once we know where we want to be at the end of the year, the, the next phase of that is to break that down into a quarterly plan. Where do we need to be at the end of this quarter if we want to get to where we need to be at the end of this year so that we can get, achieve our five-year goal? So we want to break it down, build out the plans, at least to the quarterly level. There's one other plan that I want to talk about, though, and this is, uh, and I'll tell an example of, of why this can be so important. When I was uh, working for a manufacturer servicing uh, or supporting dealers that service copiers, two of my dealers went to the dealer meeting and they came back with 3D printing systems. And we're talking an investment between one hundred and fifty and two hundred thousand dollars in equipment and supplies and training. I helped the dealers set them up and their show one in the showroom, one in, 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 a, in an area in the back where they could uh, operate them and bring customers in. And when I retired from Konica Minolta several years later, those machines were sitting in exactly the same spots I set them up. And the reason they were sitting in the same spots is because the dealer had not created a plan on how to sell it, how to service it, how to make money in the process. So they did the equivalent of throwing a significant amount of cash into the trash. They might as well just take in the money and shredded it. So one of the things that I encourage businesses to do, and I think it is vital, is any time that you are thinking about changing the services you provide or the products that you provide, it is really important for you to create a plan associated with that. That's separate from the other business plans that you have. It has to do with a new product or a new service. But you still need some of the same things. So you're going to want to run a pest analysis and run a SWOT analysis on uh, that particular product and what it would do for your business. And, and then you want to think about it from the aspect of, okay, how's that going to impact sales? What's marketing going to have to do? What's the impact in admin? If it's something that you would service, what training is required for the service? What's the investment that we need to spend to get started with it? What's the minimum viable number of customers we need? We need to go through those kinds of questions and answers, trying to, to determine whether or not you want to take that step or not. And my last point for today is, is that this is not a one-person project. In too many companies, uh, it may be that the only person that gets involved in a business plan is, is the owner. Any department that's going to be affected by a, a change needs to be consulted and involved in the business plan process. And as far as your long-term business plan, your five-year, your one-year, your quarterly business plan, your entire management team should be involved in that so that everybody's on the same page so that everybody understands where you want to go and so everybody can take a look and think about what they're going to have to do to help the company get to the destination you're, you're reaching for. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, hit like and subscribe.